Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by Hamas Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to talk about water and wind erosion. The great thing about water and wind erosion is that since they're both fluid, they're both going to erode and pick up sediments in a very, very similar fashion. They're going to organize their sediments really by size, shape, and density, so the picking up and dropping off of the sediments are going to have some sort of organization to them. Now there are a lot of factors that are going to influence erosion, so we need to get into those in a little bit. See the devastating nature of water erosion, and also the devastating nature of wind erosion as well. Now with water erosion, that's what we're going to start off with. Water erosion is the number one agent of erosion on the planet, very simply because the earth is covered by about 75% of water. Now don't get that mixed up with the number one force on the planet, and that's going to be gravity. Gravity is going to be the number one force behind erosion. Now. Whenever you get erosion, there's got to be deposition as well. Now, I have a whole other podcast on deposition, so please make sure you check that out. But deposition just very simply means that sediments get dropped off. Now, particles are going to get picked up by water in what we call the load. You have the solution load, those are going to be the dissolved particles. The suspension load, the floating particles that make water look muddy. And then finally, the saltation load, which allows your particles to bounce along the bottom of the stream bed. Now, with that particle load, because particles get dragged along the bottom, they're also going to get rounded out through the process of abrasion. And abrasion is a weathering process. So you see that erosion and weathering occur simultaneously. Now, those solution particles, because they're so teeny tiny, they're going to pretty much travel at the same speed as the water. Okay, and those saltation particles, they tend to travel much slower, a lot more friction. So here's a quick diagram that shows the different loads that the water can pick up. Now obviously your dissolved load, you can't really see it because it's part of the water column now, but you see the floating load or the suspension load and the saltation load at the bottom. Now particles tend to get rounded the farther they travel. So those rounded fragments will give you an idea in terms of how far they might have traveled uh, over its lifetime. Now obviously these particles are going to lose a little bit of mass and volume because the angled fragments are going to get rounded out. And you can see the particles on the left hand side of that picture are somewhat angled and really no definitive shape. The longer they travel, the more rounded they become. So you can see the distance of transport is depicted there. Now velocity has a lot to do with particles that get picked up. And velocity just means the speed of the water. Okay, discharge is the volume of water. So the more volume you have, okay, the faster the water. Slope is the steepness of the hill. Now the steeper the slope, the faster the water as well. So a lot of terms here that are going to be interrelated with each other. Carrying power has all has to do with the fact that water has the ability to move a particle of sediment. Now what happens here is that the faster the water, or the higher the velocity, the greater the carrying power, the bigger the particle that can be moved. The lower the velocity, lower the carrying power, the smaller particle that's going to be moved. Meanders are just very simply the turns or the bends within a stream. Now what happens here is that water is going to travel at different velocities at different locations within the bend. On the inside of the bend, water tends to travel a little bit slower, so you tend to get deposition because it has a lower carrying power. The outside of the bend, you tend to get erosion because the water is a little bit faster and you have a little bit of a greater carrying power. So you see in this picture here, the inside of the bend is where the deposition takes place. The outside of the bend is where you are going to get your erosion. Now, read this diagram. Point C is where your erosion is going to take place. That's on the outside of your turn. And again, this photograph right here really shows the beautiful erosion and deposition relationship within a meander. The little white fragments on the inside of each bend are sandbars. So you can really see the nice deposition within each individual turn. That leads us into the actual stream water itself in terms of speed. What happens is water has different speeds or different velocities based upon its location. Now water is definitely going to travel the fastest in the middle just below the surface. And the reason why? That's where the least amount of friction is going to be. Water is definitely going to be the slowest along the sides and along the bottom of the stream channel very simply because that's where the most friction is going to be found. So water travels the fastest okay, in the middle of the column just below the surface. Least amount of friction there. That leads us into the ages of streams. Streams can actually have individual ages. Young, middle age, or old age. 
Now, old streams have certain characteristics. They're relatively slow. They're relatively wide or broad. They tend to have a lot of turns or meanders. They are slow because they travel down a very gentle gradient. They tend to get things called oxbow lakes, which are meanders that have gotten cut off from the actual stream channel itself. And they tend to flood a lot. So they tend to flood their banks quite a bit. So they tend to have what are called floodplains. So there's just a diagram that's just gonna depict a relatively old age stream. And again, here you can see where the arrow is, that's an actual oxbow lake. See, it's a meander that cut up, got cut off from the actual stream itself. That leads to young streams. Young streams are very energetic. They are very fast velocity, relatively straight and very narrow, not a lot of turns. They tend to have a lot of waterfalls and rapids. Very steep gradient, which is indicated by the fast velocity of water. Because water travels so rapidly, your erosion occurs on the bottom of the stream channel, and that's what we call down cutting, which produces a relatively uh, V-shaped valley. You tend to get a V-shaped valley with a very young, fast-moving stream. So there's just quick characteristic of the roaring rapids. That's the Colorado River there. And then your classic V-shaped valley right here. And the little X right there indicates where the fastest water is going to be found. So when we talk about rivers, rivers are going to have your V-shaped valley. The glaciers are going to have a U-shaped valley. And if you get a little bit mixed up, remember you can't spell the word river without the letter V. V-shaped valley, there's a V in the word river. That leads us into a little bit with wind erosion. And like I said, wind and water erosion are very similar in terms of their erosional capacity because they're both fluids. This is gonna occur in areas where there's not a lot of plant life to anchor down the soil, so very dry, arid areas like deserts. So you need to have the soil exposed to the atmosphere in order for wind erosion to take place. And again, because wind is fluid, it's going to provide you with sorted sediments. So you can just see this is a dust bowl back from the Great Depression, tremendous amount of wind erosion. And also in very dry climates, you get a little bit of differential weathering here because of the fact that wind is going to break that rock apart and transport it to a new location. Now the carrying power of wind is very similar to the carrying power of water. And again, it's the ability for wind to move sediments, high velocity, high carrying power, low velocity, low carrying power. So very similar to water as well. Okay, and just remember guys that the two W's, your wind and water, are gonna give you sorted sediments in this case. They're going, sediments are going to get picked up, they're gonna get transported based upon certain characteristics of size, shape, and density. And make sure you check out my podcast on deposition because erosion and deposition are gonna work hand in hand. Thanks so much, we'll talk to you soon.